When I was a, a little boy, uh, I guess a little boy, I, I was always a tall, chunky little boy, and things haven't changed, I know. But um, we went to, uh, moved to a little town called Tyboli, Texas. It, it looks like Tivoli, but you know, when you're in Tyboli, you call it Tyboli. And um, so we were down in Tyboli, a whopping 900 people in the town of Tyboli, and Tyboli didn't have a Methodist church, so we went to the Methodist church in Ostwell, which was even smaller than Tyboli, and we had a two-point charge with another church, and we'd go there for church. And one of the neat things about living in Tyboli was we got to go visit <coughs> Ramses Pass National Wildlife Refuge. Anybody ever heard of the Ramses Pass National Wildlife Refuge? Well, if you didn't know, that's where you got to go in and go to this big tower. And I'd never been in a tower like this. And you climbed up this observation tower, and you'd climb all the way to the top of that tower. And as a third grader, it's quite a climb, we climb all the way to the top and get binoculars and look off the top of that tower, and we saw these birds three miles away with wingspans they were enormous and watched them take off. And there weren't very many of them. There were only 28 left in the world. We were looking at whooping cranes. It was enormous. Three miles away and they looked big from that distance. And I thought to myself as a little boy, third grader, standing there, wow. This must be what it's like to be a bird looking down at the trees. How awesome is this to be in an observation tower? And then I remember going uh, just a few years after that in 1964 to the World's Fair in New York City. <laughs> And we did the city bus tour, you know, the Gray Line tour. And we did the tour, and we went to Chinatown, and we went to this place, and we went to the, to the Statue of Liberty. And we ended up, where else but the Empire State Building, right? And man, it was a lot better than an observation tower at Rancis Pass, White National. I mean, you're way, way, way up there, and looking down, and, and cars were barely visible. And I thought, wow, this must be what it's like to be an eagle and so And then a few years after that, my dad and I had to make an emergency trip to Indiana because my grandmother had an illness. And we flew in to Louisville, Kentucky. And we went to Love Field. And I'd never been in an aerial plane. And we got on that huge 707. Remember those? Got in that huge 707 jet airplane and, and took off. And we were above the clouds looking down. And I thought to myself, wow. This must be what John Glenn saw. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how we get stuck in our points of view? Isn't it? Isn't it amazing how we get stuck in our points of view? Ron and Karen and I were driving down to, to Waco and um, we're coming across this hill on Friday. We went down to to be there for Cheney Bedner's um, estate being honored, and Cheney being honored for giving a large gift to the Methodist Children's Home. And there's a neat plaque, and they made a mistake on the plaque that said Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I let them know that if they could, he gave enough money, they ought to make another plaque to the Grand Prairie Home. Whether they do or not, I don't know. But as we're driving down there, back to the story, we look over and Ron and I were looking at this vista and I said to myself, isn't that gorgeous? You know some of those places when you're going through the, the beginnings of the hill country and you look out and you see the land and the way the farms are laid out and everything, and it's just gorgeous to me. And 
Karen being from Arkansas says they're just not enough trees. <laughs> that isn't exactly what you said, but it's pretty close. Just not enough trees. Point of view. We get stuck, don't we, in our point of view, in what we can see. And the scripture today says an interesting thing. We can no longer look at each other from a human point of view. We can no longer look at each other from a human point of view. What kind of point of view do we have? And the truth is, astonishing enough, we have to look at each other from a different point of view now. We are eternal. Jesus Christ's gift to us has made us eternal beings. We're not temporary anymore. We're eternal. And that point of view changes everything. And, and then I began to think, well, point of view is kind of like being on that tower, or being in the Empire State Building, or being in that 707, or being in that, that, on that hill just past Hillsboro, and, and it's seeing more than others have seen. And I thought to myself, I wonder what God's point of view is. And then it hit. I got it. I hope you get it too. You see, the scripture started off saying, we can be confident because we can walk in faith. And I thought, wow, that puts a whole different spin on faith, doesn't it? When I know that God can see all, knows all, and can guide me the way God needs me to go, I can be confident in my faith in God, not my faith in what's going to happen. That's different. But I have faith that God knows and can see where I'm going. It's like this maze on the screen. God's in the hut. Can you see that? God's in the hut. And God can see and tell me. It's like God has this little earbud in all of our ears, and he's trying to tell us through his Holy Spirit, no, go this way, go that way. God knows where our steps need to go. God already knows these things. We in our spiritual life, in our prayer life, in our praying without ceasing, in our listening, hearts when we listen for God's voice we don't have to worry about where we step we can step in faith not blind faith I'm sorry blind faith is just hoping it works out faith in God is knowing Knowing it'll be okay. Knowing in the end, God will not let me go. Knowing that it may be hard and I may be asked to do things I don't really want to do, but if I'll go the way God asks me to go, if I have faith that God's way is my way, if we have that faith, then we can step in. We can step out and trust. There's a story about a mountain climber who was doing some solo work. He was getting rather late. He knew he had just a while longer he had to be on the next ledge and get down and it would be freezing cold and he wouldn't make it through the night if he stayed on the mountain. And then what happens but one of his ropes, the, the hook in the side of the mountain breaks loose and he plummets down and finally boom, he comes to a stop on his safety rope. He begins to pray. How many of us would pray? Right? He begins to pray. Lord, help me through this. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And the voice comes. Cut the rope. What? Cut the rope. He couldn't do it. And the next morning they found him three feet above the path. Hanging. 
hanging on his rope. All he had to do was cut the rope. You see, that sounds like blind faith, but that's the way it is in our lives. Oftentimes, God calls on us to do things that just don't make sense. It doesn't look like something we should really do. You want me to what? You want me to volunteer at vacation Bible school? Yes, it will do your heart good. Really? Really? You want me to take Spanish classes? I have very limited Spanish vocabulary. Taco, burrito. <laughs> I can do a rose cone polio, but that's about it. And you want me to learn Spanish? Yes. Why? Because there are other people struggling just as hard to learn English. Maybe it's time for us to learn how to struggle too. If we struggle together, one group learning English, one group learning Spanish, maybe we can meet somewhere and really have a dialogue, right? With our neighbors. You want me to do that? Yes. If Darvish can learn English and Spanish, and he's Japanese, surely we can learn a little Spanish, don't you think? What an amazing young man. He's a great pitcher, but he's an amazing young man from what I understand. What, what is it that, that God's calling you to do that, that you don't get? Maybe that call's been there a long time. Maybe it's a call that you just said, man, that ain't gonna happen. I need to do something else. I had a friend. There was a storm and he sat in my um, Sunday school classroom on a Wednesday night when nobody else would come out because the storm was so bad, kind of like this last Wednesday, right? Except we were already up here. Cracked windshields and all, right? And he sat there and he began to tell me a story. He said, I felt the call to the ministry when I was 17 years old. I, don't, I just realized I, I was never going to be able to go to college and I was never going to be able to do this and I was never going to be able to do that. So I became a carpenter instead and I said, what do you think God's calling you to now? Dead silence. It's never left, preacher. Well, I understand they have school for folks like us, you know, who don't think we can do school. I mean, if I did it, you can do it. So I went back to school. Worked as a carpenter at the same time and got through school. I mean, <laughs> undergraduate. In his late thirties. And then he said, Well, I don't just want to do it kind of. I said, Well, go to Perkins School of Theology and do the whole thing. And he did. You know a guy like that, don't you? You know a guy who went through all kinds of hard times to get into the ministry, right? Who had to flee his country who had no place to put his family, who escaped to this country, who became a student, who, who did that while working part-time at Walmart. That's a good job, by the way, right now, I understand. Going to school, ends up in a, in a church like this one, with strange people, I mean, come on. It becomes Jimmy Green, the elder in the church. Because he just won't stop stepping out. God 
us, not done with us. He calls on us to step with faith. And he calls on us to step not just with shaky faith. He says, have confidence. Be confident. Believe that what I tell you is going to work. Trust me. Because I tell you, God has a very different perspective. He's in a different place. And he sees everything. And he knows where we need to put our feet. And where we need to put our lives. We need to trust him. Let's trust him. Step out in faith in that confidence of God, knowing he knows where to go. Let's pray. Precious Lord, you are our Father. Your Son Jesus has stepped where we've stepped. He's done what we've done. He's gone where we've gone. And he goes with us now. Your Holy Spirit guides us, speaks to our hearts, and tells us your will. Call us and give us the faith to step out with confidence to be your church and to do the ministry wherever we are you call us to do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.